So one of the best ways to start in real estate is with a house hack. And for those of you who don't know what a house hack is, a house hack is where you use a primary residency loan in order to take advantage of the low down payment options. This means you can effectively get a new house for very, very little amount of money, often 3% or 5% down of the purchase price. In my case, I actually used a VA loan for my first house and uh, I ended up paying nothing toward the entire thing. But the thing is when you pay these low down payments, a lot of times what you can find is the mortgage can't match the rent amount. Now, the only time that's not the case is when you do room rentals. So sometimes you might be able to find you can make up the mortgage with the vacation model or you know, maybe the uh, when you uh, get a triplex or quad and rent out the rest of the units, but oftentimes your most common type of house is gonna be something where you can live in one room and rent out the others. So what I wanna go over today is where in Baltimore I would go in order to find the best places to house hack. You're gonna to wanna to look for a couple things in order to find your best deal. So realistically, what you're trying to do is maximize your appreciation in the house, uh, maximize your principal pay down, and maximize cash flow while also having tenants who are relatively easy to work with as far as the fact that they have very good paying jobs or maybe long-term tenants, uh, maybe the fact that they are, you know, pretty uh, aware of being respectful of others in the house. So anyway, I'm gonna show you on the map here uh, where you should be looking at in Baltimore if you wanna look at a house hack. And by the way, uh, this video really comes from one of the viewers who uh, asked me to do more videos centric to Baltimore. Uh, obviously, I have to do some videos for a little bit more wide encompassing and broad and make sure that I can you know, get a max audience <laughs> to have a lot of value in the videos that I'm producing. But I will be doing more of these videos of just me looking into Baltimore or even just driving around the area. So if you like these type of videos, let me know, comment below, let me know if you want more videos on just Baltimore and what exactly I do in this city. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, and so here we are in Baltimore and obviously by the map, you can see here on the red line that I'm highlighting that that's actually where Baltimore City is. So although Baltimore is often defined by 695, which is the highway that circles it, uh, not all of it's actually Baltimore. Some higher end areas are actually outside of the actual grid where Baltimore is. That's important mostly because of taxes. Your taxes are gonna be higher in Baltimore City. What's also important to note is that in Baltimore City, you can have a maximum occupancy of four. So just keep that in mind when you're doing your, uh, you know, your searching. Now, I've never actually seen that enforced. Now, when I say maximum occupancy of four, this is unrelated guests. So obviously a family, that doesn't count. But uh, in Baltimore County, it's actually two people. So if you're up here in these areas and such, just remember that it's technically two, but like I said, I've never seen that enforced. So you can take that as you will. So when I'm looking at Baltimore to house hack for the first time, what I wanna do is follow this 83 highway. So I'm gonna act as if you guys aren't familiar with Baltimore at all. There's this highway 83 that kind of cuts through the city and goes into the downtown area. So let's start at the top of this area. Now, what you need to know if you are trying to invest in Baltimore, is to not go west of 83. <laughs> so don't go west of this line. All of this is not gonna be great areas for house hacking. What you wanna do is stay east, and there's a very big reason for that, and I'm gonna show you over time. Try to stay under Northern Parkway if you can. Uh, you're, why, the reason why is because you wanna stay in a high-valued areas, areas where they're in high demand. Anything around these, uh, like Notre Dame University or Loyola University, anything around these universities, they're gonna gradually move up because the universities are putting a lot of money and time and effort into these areas. So you're gonna find a lot of these areas have million dollar homes or $500,000 homes and such. And so they're very in high demand, but of course you're gonna find the cheaper ones. What we're looking for is actually a one bed to one bath ratio. And let me go ahead and explain that before we continue. So the reason you want a one bed, one bath sort of ratio, um, it, it basically you want three, three or two, two or four, four is because for every bathroom you don't have, that means two rooms are sharing and both of those go down in value. And also it, generally the tenancy is not as long. Believe it or not, you can have tenants stay in a room sharing house for two to three years or more. I have actually had this happen to me 
So that's something that you uh, definitely want to seek is maybe one bed, one bath count. What that means is we're looking for certain square footage sizes. You're looking for larger homes. And in these affluent areas, you're often going to find much larger homes. So taking advantage of that, you can get a really nice home that your tenants are proud to live in and don't even want to leave. So just keep that in mind when we're looking through these areas we're also looking for the sizes of the houses so as we get back into this um we're pretty much gonna be able to go anywhere other than east of york road for the most part okay so that's a really good indicator also you're gonna see it changes its name to greenmount avenue uh you know the main point is that route 45 right? Stay west of that. As you go east of that, the housing properties, uh, the values actually drop significantly. So let's take this area of Guilford. Once again, area where you're going to find $600,000 homes. You're going to, even uh, as you get closer and closer to Greenmount, which we'll call this street from going forward, the, the home values will drop. They will drop, but they don't get too low. As soon as we go across the street, however, then they drop significantly, going into 160,000 and less, sometimes as low as 80 and such. So, I mean, this is consistent, pretty much going down the line. Waverly, it, you know, it gets a little bit better in this area, but then as it goes to better Waverly, it gets worse again, ironically. So, um, you know, you can find some nice stuff around here, but the problem is a lot of the tenants are not gonna wanna live east of Greenmount. They're gonna wanna stay hugging around Johns Hopkins, Loyola and Notre Dame. So just keep that in mind when you get your house hack. Now, as we go throughout this, you're gonna find a lot of areas that are very, very popular to young professionals. Keep in mind, young professionals love these areas just as much as students. And I'd highly recommend going for the young professional as well. They have money and they're generally there to stick around. So here out in Hamden is one area where a lot of young professionals want to live. And so do students, of course. There's a lot of restaurants, a lot of bars, a lot going on. It's very walkable, very safe, and has a really vibrant culture to it. Also, as you're going down south, you can find the Remington area. This is also very popular, uh, most specifically known for Our House, which is a little restaurant there. But I mean, overall, though, there's a lot going on here. Uh, a lot of, uh, you know, people want to live in this area. I'd say this also makes a great house hack. And the best part is the houses start to get a little cheaper in Remington. You can see them a little bit smaller, but maybe if you're not qualifying for those $300,000 houses, you can house hack on something a lot smaller and make it work. Uh, the best part also is they have a lot of unfinished basements where you can renovate that and easily get another bedroom that you can live in. So if we go over to Charles Village, this is where we get into kind of an artsy district. And I would definitely say this is a good area to start. Uh, you're actually gonna find a couple vacants here in certain areas. I mean, I won't go into the specifics of it, but essentially there are vacants kind of ish in this area. Remember, the closer you get to 45, the more that's gonna happen. That's okay, because if you use the burst strategy in order to create a room rental, then that would be a great way to do it. Now, of course, we're gonna talk about house hacks, so you're gonna really kind of stick a little bit more west. Now, as we go down, you're gonna find this Barclay area. Barclay is actually pretty nice. There's a lot of development going on, but the problem is, once you get past Barclay Street and start going really toward 45, it starts getting really heavy on the vacants. So I'd definitely stay on the west side. We actually manage a room sharing house in this area, and it's been working pretty well. Old Goucher starts to get a little bit more of an industrial vibe, but once again, still exactly where people want to live. So I definitely would invest here as far as a house hack. And this is where you can get the maximum appreciation, the maximum uh, principal pay down, and the maximum tax advantage. Now, I've said this a couple times, let me go into a couple more reasons why you want that. So the biggest thing you wanna think about is when you have your taxes uh, as high as possible, but you're not actually paying them, you can actually report that against your W-2 income and actually lower your taxable income. Also, because the interest is higher on these higher end homes, your interest counts against your W-2 income. So if you have two people making $100,000, a person house hacking in these areas that I'm mentioning is actually gonna make more money than a person who's not doing that simply because they're not being taxed on all of their money. Obviously the principal pay down being larger on larger end homes. So just keep that in mind as we go through all this. 
All right, and so now we're gonna go ahead and continue to hug 83. Here we get to the Station North. Station North is important because of Pennsylvania Station. Now the reason that's important is because a lot of people wanna take the Mark train into uh, maybe the counties and even as far as DC. Uh, when they go to DC, they wanna have cheaper housing than they actually get in DC, so of course they'll live in Baltimore. It's a lot cheaper here. So I would definitely recommend uh, being in the Station North area. It's also very walkable. A lot going on here. Obviously, you're seeing the temporary close because of the whole situation happening right now, but usually there's a lot going on in this area. Uh, the University of Baltimore is also in this area. You're going to see uh, MICA, the Maryland Institute of College of the Art. Uh, essentially, you're going to get a lot of students wanting to live in this area once again, but even though you have a lot of students, please note that young professionals also want to live here too. So you don't have to have necessarily a student vibe. So now we're going to go a bit west here. Now, I know I said don't go west of 83, but that's actually an exception a little bit below Druid Hill Lake. Now, what I would say is between 83 and Utah, all right, so you're gonna see this Utah Street here, you wanna stay in between that, all right? And in between that, you're gonna get Reservoir Hill and Bolton Hill. Now, Reservoir Hill is kind of untested water for me. Uh, the area is being renovated, so if you want to ride the appreciation wave that's happening with Druid Hill Lake, they're renovating that up a little bit. They're also adding a few shops, not that many, but a few shops in the area right now. I think there's only really a liquor store. Um, but, you know, if you want to ride that wave, then this is actually probably a great place to start. Massive homes for cheap prices that can be easily renovated. And even if you're not renovating, if you stay kind of close-ish to this area, uh, closer to 83, you can find some really nice neighborhoods. These are quiet neighborhoods. So, you know, although I've not tested it and we're about to, we actually have a house hack we're developing in the um, uh, Reservoir Hill area. This area is a little bit untested, but I think it can do very well. So next we have Bolton Hill. Bolton Hill, massive historical community. And that's huge. Uh, Baltimore has protected Bolton Hill for many, many years. It has very rarely ever dropped in housing prices. So this is a very stable area. Like I said, I just wouldn't cross into Madison Park. We actually did test a house hack in this area and it doesn't really work. There's a little bit too much going on as far as, uh, let's say drug dealers and such. So um, I would kind of stay out of this area. Maybe if you would got directly across the street on Utah, there are some really big houses and they're close enough where, you know, it probably won't be an issue, but Bolton Hill, you're definitely looking at the 500,000 to a million dollar range. Actually, my first house hack was in Bolton Hill, is in Bolton Hill, and uh, it's been doing fantastically ever since. So Midtown, once again, great. Midtown Belvedere, all of this is gonna be good. And what I would say is as long as you stay between, let's say McCullough Homes here and Latrobe Homes here, these are actually projects, if you don't know, then you're pretty much good to go. So in this area, you're gonna find the Mount Vernon area, another area of art and a lot of vibrant stuff going on, a lot of bars and things happening here. People love to be in this area. So uh, I think you're gonna do a lot of success in Mount Vernon if you get a house in this area. Area. You can also find some pretty large houses here as well, though it does start to mix into large and small. So now we're gonna go ahead and follow 83 on down, and then we get to the downtown area. So this area is terrible for house hacking. <laughs> so you might say, well, wait a minute, isn't it great? It's a great neighborhood. Well, yeah, it is, but um, the problem is you're gonna end up getting homes that are so expensive, but yet don't have the square footage to really allow house hacking to work. So I would actually avoid the downtown area. Um, I mean, you can maybe find something, but it, it probably won't work as well as you want it to. Uh, next, if you go a little bit west, you can actually find some pretty nice spots. I would avoid um, some areas here, all right? So it starts to get a little tricky, like Lexington Market. I probably wouldn't do a house hack in Lexington Market. But anything around the University of Maryland, kind of in all these areas, I think you can do very well there. People want to gravitate toward these universities. Remember, all these universities, yeah, I just said Lexington Market's still good. So it's Kind of tricky, like I said, but in this case, University of Baltimore is something you can gravitate toward. I have seen some experiments happen um, up in, let's say, areas like Heritage Crossing. So in Heritage Crossing, right in this little area here, uh, there's some new developments. And if you want to ride the wave, you can go on the edge of that. I've actually seen some fantastic deals there. I don't know if I'd do it for house hacking, room sharing. You might find... Uh, a little bit of a problem getting the tenants you want, but you know, you can go for it. Obviously don't go north toward the McCullough Homes area. You don't want necessarily projects. 
So let's go ahead and follow down here. And here's where we get a little interesting. All right, bear circle, nice. All right, all of that can work out great for you. Um, Otterbein is obviously kind of basically the uh, inner harbor area. Now, as we go toward Pigtown, you're gonna hear a lot about this area called Pigtown. Pigtown has been saying it's up and coming. I'll be honest, they've been saying it's up and coming for 20 years. <laughs> so th this is not really going, moving upward. Not like other neighborhoods that really are up and coming and have been moving north. So what I would say is this, if you're gonna do Pigtown, I would stay on Washington Boulevard, all right? Hug that, and as long as you don't really cross Cross Street, then you're probably fine. There are some hit or miss areas in this, but it's more miss than hit. So I would just be careful about doing Pigtown. You might find people a little bit intimidated to live there, so just watch out for that. Now, here's another area of caution. Now, for those in Baltimore, they might be like, what caution? That's Fed Hill, that's great. But the problem with Fed Hill is two things. One, it's a college party town. All right, so I know there's colleges all up in the north and almost no colleges here, but this one is realistically a party town. So that's number one. Number two, it's very populated. So you're gonna have, have like issues with parking for your tenants. The problem is when you don't have parking, the tenants wanna leave often sooner and they have more issues with it. Now you might get lucky and find tenants who don't have cars and uh, you can probably do well with that. Otherwise though, I would still say this is a solid, let's say B, you know, uh, area two, uh, house hack. Fed Hill has a lot going on, a lot of uh, good places to eat, a lot of good areas to go. Uh, you're definitely going to get young professionals, most specifically, uh, actually young professionals probably more than college students, most specifically because it, there's not really any colleges here. You're definitely going to have a lot going on here. So I wouldn't say it's bad necessarily, but it definitely doesn't have quite the same allure as some of like what we're going to go into like Fells Point. So as we go east here, you're gonna find Locust Point, all right? So this is the Locust Point area. I would say it's basically as nice as Federal Hill, however, with a calm attitude to it. I would say this is a great area to house hack. The problem is these houses go into like $500,000 homes. So uh, you may have a little bit of issue affording them, but um, if you can qualify and make it work, just remember to do your pro forma because once you get into the $500,000 territory, getting the room sharing model to work even still gets difficult. You need the rents to be very high. You're going to really in DC kind of prices at that point. So let's go back up north and let's look at the Fells area. So we got Jonestown, we got Little Italy, all these are great. That's a little almost Inner Harbor-ish here. Uh, but as long as you uh, stay in this Fells area along the, the coast or, you know, I would say only go as far north as Fayette. All right, I think an easy marker is Route 40. Stay about two blocks south of Route 40. You don't really wanna go north of that. Uh, you see a university here, but a lot of this area is actually really, really rough. So I would stay south of this. And uh, also, you're gonna see this little area here, all right? If I go out, you're gonna see it says Perkins Homes. You, these are projects. So you don't really wanna be in this necessarily this area, but all these are massive homes for great pricing. And you actually can still find a lot of good uh, flips here. Um, and a flip means you can burr into a room sharing house. And also the Butcher's Hill area, you're gonna find that uh, is, you know, has a lot of potential as well, has a lot of great areas. All is Fells Point, you're doing fantastically. Now, as long as you kind of hug Patterson Park, you're gonna do great in all of these areas, all right? This is all popular, Canton. Heavy, heavy uh, young professional district. Brewers Hill, very nice. Actually, there's still a lot going on as far as some renovations going on here, but you're gonna find really good value here. And you can find some cheap homes, expensive homes, and you can ride the wave of that appreciation. Highland Town. Now this one's a little bit cheaper, all right? We're getting away from the Canton Brewers Hill kind of prices, more like 200,000, but it's still, I would say, house hackable. There's not as much going on. Maybe the Johns Hopkins Medical Center, you might find uh, people who work there and such. But there's not as much, but I would still say this can work as a house hack, as long as you kind of stay north, uh, a bit south of Lombard, maybe. Um, and then, like I said, south of Fayette. I mean, you'll hear stories about Patterson Park, people being kind of robbed in this area. And while that might be still a little bit true, um, honestly, it's a lot better than bad. 
So uh, now let's go a little bit outside of these areas, all right? So there's a couple other gems in Baltimore that I would, you know, I think you could make a house hack work. Lake Montebello, I think all of this Mayfield area, I think you can find some nice housing. There's some great views on the lake. I think a lot is happening there that a lot of people want to be a part of, and that's why you can see some housing uh, values rise there. Another lake that you may want to try out is Hamlin Park. Now, this is also near uh, community college, but most uh, specifically in this Hamlin area, there's actually beautiful homes. I mean, just fantastic, gorgeous homes that I think would really work for a house hack. You actually can get some uh, great values there. They actually seem to care about this lake quite a bit. So uh, next we're gonna go ahead and move upward and we're gonna go into the Lock Raven, uh, Lauraville, Pairing Lock. I think realistically what you're looking for is things around Morgan State. Now Morgan State does have a little, a little bit of a miss kind of areas maybe in like Hillen and such. So it's not all around Morgan State, but there definitely is some good stuff here in Lauraville, uh, you know, in this kind of here area. You're gonna drive around a little bit and you're gonna start to see like, okay, there's some nice spots to be had in this area. Now, as we scroll out, we're getting out of Baltimore a little bit, but I think Baltimore County really counts a lot. I think if you hug this Towson area, all right, so Towson, very popular spot. Yes, the school, Towson University is there, but actually it is very popular amongst young professionals. Once again, great for room sharing. I did mention the occupancy limit thing though, however, so like I said, do so at your own risk with that. However, I have not noticed anyone really taking, been uh, challenged by that. Uh, Parkville is another spot you can work with. Not as good as Towson, but cheaper. And then you can start to get a little bit better here in Pikesville once again. Not as good as Towson, but cheaper. So it just depends on what your values you're looking for. But I would say those are all the areas I would be in. I would stay away from all of this, updating all this Coppin Heights and all that. I would, I would stay absolutely away from all that. And I would stay away from anything also in this area, like Middle East and Orangeville. I mean, this is not really where you want to be with a house hack. So um, that's realistically Baltimore. And uh, I think those are the areas where I would house at. All right, so that is my tour of Baltimore. And this is basically, we're focusing, like I said, on room sharing houses, um, trying to maximize the effect out of that. I can, of course, show where some of my properties are and why I chose those areas, not even just for house hacks, but in future videos, if you wanna know like, okay, where are me and my partners buying properties and why did we choose those areas? There are areas where I wouldn't house hack in, but I definitely would buy property in. And of course we have properties in those areas. So if you like this type of video, let me know. Just try to do something a little different, a little bit more of a focus on Baltimore. I'll do a few more videos where I drive around a little bit as well. Maybe talk to you as I'm driving and uh, we can get a little bit more of this city on this channel. So uh, hopefully you like and subscribe and I'll talk to you all very soon.